Hi, I'm Steve, the introverted traveler. I've made it my mission in life to explore the beaches, deserts, mountains, and even cityscapes around us, and to do so while avoiding contact with as many people as possible. And although I will never hang out with you for any reason, I do invite you to join me on my journey. Come and see the world through the eyes of an extreme introvert. On this edition, we conclude our three-part exploration of the Indian Heaven Wilderness with a trip down both the Indian Heaven Trail and the Pacific Crest Trail near Trout Lake in Washington State. Along the way, we will take in breathtaking views, travel through dense forests, and experience the beauty of both the fall and of giant mushroom season. All this and much more on this Introverted Travels. Greetings, and I'm back yet again on yet another adventure. And today, well, today I am back in familiar territory. I'm in the middle of freaking nowhere. In the woods, again, amongst the bark and the trees and the green things and the yellow things, because of course it's fall, and the other yellow things and the other green things and the twigs and the mushrooms and the moss, etc., etc., etc. But more specifically, I am back for my third adventure here in the Indian Heaven Wilderness in southern Washington. More specifically, I'm on the Indian Heaven Trail number 33. I don't really know what the numbering system is, if it's the 33rd trail in the system, or if there really is an Indian Heaven trail number 1 through 32. I have no idea. I may be on a sequel. There you go. This might be a long-running series, and I may be on a sequel trail. But I am headed through the woods. Big shocker. On what? All Trails says is about a 6.2 round trip <clears throat> out and back, whatever you want to call it. And the turnaround point for this particular trail is the connection of this trail and our old friend, the Pacific Crest Trail. Yeah, the Pacific Crest Trail is literally everywhere. I mean, I can throw a rock in the woods and boom, it's on the Pacific Crest Trail. But I may do some modifications of this hike today. This is not a very long hike. It's again, about a six mile hike round trip according to all trails. So it's probably about an 18 to 19 mile hike in reality because this is the part of the formula where you can mouth the words or you can take a shot, whatever you want to do. All trails sucks. But we know that all trails sucks. We know how long the hike's going to be. We know roughly where I am. But what, you may be asking yourself, about the meat and the potatoes, so to speak, of the introduction section. Well, the trailhead for this particular hike was at a campground. You know what else likes to go to campgrounds? people. It wasn't, I'm not going to say it was full, but there were a lot of cars. So many cars, I, I, I didn't even bother counting. Let's just say there's a buttload of, of people possibly out here, possibly running around the woods, possibly lingering in the bushes, and possibly coming up to me to say hello. Needless to say, I'm not exactly a happy, weird, bald introvert at the moment, because there's people. However, at this particular second in time, I seem to be alone in the trail. There's no one trying to come up to me, no one trying to say hello, no one trying to get into my face, no one saying, oh, good morning. I haven't seen any children yet, but I know that there's, there's mysterious, weird, annoying children all over these woods because there was last week. Of course, I'm on my second week here in the Indian Heaven Wilderness and my third trip. Uh, last week, I did the LeMay Trail and the LeMay Rock, but anyway, I haven't seen any children. I have seen some people and I saw one dog. So... I saw one thing I like and a whole bunch of stuff that I couldn't stand. But uh, there are some hikers on this trail, and so that's awful. But there's also some, uh, you know, trail on this trail. There's some beauty. We've already, already gone through the green things and the yellow things and the bark and all that stuff. And I'm hearing noises in the bush. So there's Bigfoots as well. Don't forget the Bigfoot. I'm in southern Washington. I'm in the middle of the woods. There's always a Bigfoot. Bigfoot's everywhere, even though they don't actually exist. But... If they did, if Bigfoot was real, I would make a rant saying there's too many damn Bigfoots. Okay, so you know where I am, you know that all trail sucks, and you know the meat and potatoes that, you know, humanity sucks, and they're everywhere around here. 
I, I think I've covered it all. I mean, I could keep going and rambling and rambling, but uh, I kind of just rather plunge into the green and the bark and the trees and uh, take it from there. So uh, let's do that and let's get this done. Here's my update. There's nothing to update because uh, still in the woods. I mean, not that you should be surprised by that, but uh, the woods still have trees. I mean, there's some bark there. There's a, there's a trunk. Uh, the trees have leaves, or in this case, needles. There's uh, sticks. Uh, I passed some sticks over. Yeah, right, right there, right where my fingers pointing. There's some sticks. Um, that beyond that. No, no, nothing, nothing new. I mean, the forest isn't going to invent like new laws of physics or biology or something just for my video, although that would be awesome if the universe would do that and it really should get on that plan. The one good thing about this today, I haven't seen any people since the trailhead. So I'm literally mindlessly meandering through an, right now at the moment, an empty forest. It's basically the same crap I saw last week, except I will say that even though I'm in the exact same forest I was last week, this section looks a little bit different. We're a few miles from uh, last week's trailhead. We're a few miles down from last week's trailhead. There's not as much uh, fall color out here. There's not as much underbrush. There, there was a hell of a lot of it last week, but this week, I mean, there's some. You see some oranges and some yellows and all that, but it, it's not as heavy. And, and it just goes to show you that even though you're in the same forest system, it's like a snowflake. There's no two parts of the forest that are, you know, absolutely identical. But what I will tell you is even though there is variation within the forest to one degree or another, there are common themes here in the forest. I mean, I could be attacked and dragged into you know, the underbrush and into the deep forest at, at any time. And my body could be devoured and eaten by any number of predators, including, you know, cougar, bear, and, and Sasquatch. But uh, since there's like lottery odds of that happening, it probably won't, but there's other ways that I could die out here. You know, I, I could trip and impale myself on, you know, one of those twigs that I was talking about, the, the dangerous twig. The, the wind could blow a, a trunk onto my body and, and completely crush me. I mean, if, if a, the wind blew one of these really heavy trees on me, I, I'd pop like a zit. There'd be brains and blood. Should, my brain would be right there. So really what I'm trying to say is the real common theme, even though there's variation within a forest, the common theme is death. It's, it's ever present here in the, uh, forests of the Pacific Northwest. I can just hear the Grim Reaper. You know, he's dragging his scythe along the forest floor and he's just, he's just trolling. He's just waiting for, for one of us hikers to completely mess up. Death could come for us at any time. And here in the forest, it is ever present. So next time you're out for a nature walk and you're looking at the plants and you're smelling the flowers or whatever's out or in the fall, you're peeping the, the leaves. Just know that um, you are just an inch. Maybe not even, maybe a centimeter. We'll, we'll go metric system that close to the edge of the darkness and the abyss at any given time. Death is everywhere and it's going to get you. Never forget it. So on that happy note, I, I'm going to keep hiking. I'm going to go deeper, deeper into the woods and I'm going to go find the Pacific Crest Trail because what the hell else am I going to do? I mean, death will come for me when it comes for me. I'm just going to sit here and wait. No, I'm going to go do something. There you go. It's what I could not capture last week because of the weather conditions. You got 100% volcano this time. I mean, there it is. Not only did you get 100% volcano in this video, that is a volcano that has been freshly snowed on because it snowed a couple of days ago. Well, it rained in Portland because, you know, Portland doesn't know what snow is. It just only knows water. But uh, yeah, there you go. There is Mount Adams right in front of us. And I have another special treat because I just noticed it because I, I looked left. And, you know, when you look left, there's cool things once in a while that pop up, especially here in the Pacific Northwest. <sighs> Mount Rainier, right there. See that, that, that thing right there? That big white thing? 
again, we just got fresh snow here. You know, it's the first snow of the season, so it only affected really, really high altitudes. That's why you get, you know, snow on top of volcanoes and not here in the forest. By the way, I am close to the edge, and, and I'm panicking inside. Don't worry, uh, I am doing this rant while completely on fire with anxiety. So uh, just know that the crazy is here, but uh, we're talking about volcanoes right now, so I'll put the crazy on pause for a minute. But yeah, there's Mount Rainier. Somewhere in the distance behind a bunch of trees is Mount St. Helens, and in the other direction, somewhere over there where the big ball of flame in the sky is, is Mount Hood. So, we, we got the whole gang out today, but uh, in particular, there's Mount Rainier. I, I came to a spot where if you went off the trail just a little bit, there was a rock ledge, and you could look out, and it was a gorgeous shot of Mount Adams and the forest below, and in the distance, Mount Rainier. So I'm sitting there with my GoPro, filming my, my video, filming my film, and uh, I'm, I'm about halfway through one of my, you know, patented, witty, genius, brilliant diatribes, you know, the ones I usually make, and I hear people. I'm, I think to myself, okay, well, I'll turn off the diatribe, I'll, I'll restart, and I'll let the nightmare awfulness pass, and, and we'll just move on. It didn't pass. It was a mother and two children. Now, I'm out here in the woods, right? There's open space everywhere. You would think that there's plenty of places to stop along the trail where you can be off by yourself. You don't have to, if you see someone already there, you don't have to bother them. You don't have to stop and, and annoy them. You don't have to be anywhere near them. Oh, oh no, no, mom, mom didn't, didn't get that memo. I've just spent about 10 minutes because I was camping out there trying to get the, the, the shot. I just spent 10 minutes she set her kids on a rock and they proceeded to have lunch. And so I got to hear the chittering and the chattering and the noises and the beeping and the bobbing. Oh, oh because mom decided she didn't want to use birth control and that she was going to bring yet more people into an overcrowded dying world because of course. At this point, what, why are we still having kids? First of all, they're annoying as shit. And second of all, this is like the only empty space left. It's like right here in the state of Washington. Everywhere else, people. There's people everywhere. And, and even here, I'm in the middle of freaking nowhere. I'm just gonna take this moment, I'm gonna set aside that anger and, and, and you know, terror that's lurking inside of me. And I'm just gonna say, for all of you out there thinking of starting a family and bringing more people into an overcrowded dying world, the, the animal shelters are, are, are full of dogs. Go adopt like four of those and, and just use condoms with your human partners. D don't bring up any more children. Don't, you, you don't need to. You, you especially don't need to bring them out here in the middle of the woods on a hiking trail and then sit them next to me. I mean, I, I knew there'd be children because they lurk in the woods and they wait for me, but I didn't realize it was going to be like DEFCOM 1000 and there'd be like the nuclear bomb of annoying headed straight towards me. I'm just going to keep going down the trail because what else can I do? At this point, it's either keep swimming or the children will find me. metaphorically rains, it metaphorically pours. So the first mile and a half of this hike was, was great. I was at the campground and there were some people there. That was terrible, but it, it, it's a campground. I, mean, I could rant about it, but it, it's a campground. Let's just forget about that. But first mile and a half, I was in the woods. I was alone. It was quiet. I had solitude, but more importantly, I had peace within my heart and within my soul. And then the incident with the children happened. By the way, I'm pretty sure that that mother who is, you know, sitting 10 feet from me with her two kids, letting them chitter chatter and have lunch right in front of me. I'm pretty sure that that was the devil. I'm pretty sure that was Lucifer incarnate, Lucifer herself in the flesh, because what moral sane human being would do that to a to bald, innocent hiker? I mean, seriously. But since that terrible incident, I've heard hooping and hollering through the woods. I've seen people coming at me. I've seen people coming from behind me. I, I, I saw somebody walking around the woods collecting mushrooms. I mean, what am I gonna find next? Jehovah's Witnesses popping out of the bushes and asking me to convert? <sighs> when does it end, folks? When does this viral infection on the planet called humanity end? 
Now, I'm not really surprised because A, it's Sunday and Sunday likes to kick my ass every week. And also B, it's the beginning of the fall season. We're getting deeper and deeper and further and further away from summer. And that means that in just a month or so, this is just going to be one giant snowball. There's going to be like no humans out here and just abominable snowman, you know, walking up through the woods and leaving giant footprints. But until then, everyone's desperate to get into nature. Everyone's desperate to see the trees and, and the leaves and the giant mutant mushrooms and whatever else is out here. And so they are around me and they're talking and they're just... Oh. So I'm, I'm at my, my wit's end. All I can do is the sane and normal thing, and that's, you know, turn on the GoPro and make it hilarious, brilliant, we've already agreed that it's brilliant, rant to, to all of you, because otherwise I'd lose my mind. And more people are coming, so I gotta go. Let's go. Somebody just passed me and told me to have a good hike. Why stop there? While you're at it, just why don't you just say good morning, hello, wish me a happy birthday, and start telling me about your childhood. You're, you've already dug the metaphorical dagger into my heart, so you might as well just keep twisting. <sighs> you know, if you really, really want me to have a great hike, you don't need to wish me a good hike. Just, just see me. Don't make eye contact. And walk the other direction. Just shh. That's, that's the only thing I need to have a good hike. For you, not to be here, and for just no, no talking. We, we, we don't need to exchange pleasantries. We don't need to have eye contact. We don't need to acknowledge each other in any way. No, no. I'd have a great hike if it wasn't for you and all the rest of the human viruses out here. But alas, the person said, have a good hike. And now I'm having a lousy hike. So uh, I'm going to keep lousy hiking that way. But yeah, it, it, it's literally hell on earth out here today. And there's a creepy person behind me. A, that mushroom person is back. They keep like stopping and then and, and going in the woods and pulling out more mushrooms and then walking up behind me and then boom, going in the woods and pulling. It's a freaking horror show out here. I mean, it's almost Halloween, so I understand, but does it have to be this terrifying? This trail's called the Indian Heaven Trail, right? But after experiencing it for myself today, I would like to propose changing the name to better reflect the reality of what this trail really is. So I'd like to introduce to you the People Hell Trail. There's people everywhere. I mean, in this case, usually I exaggerate when I describe how many people are on the trail, but in this case, they were literally coming out of the woods at me. But alas, I am almost to the PCT. It's this general direction, but there, I saw some people go this way. So I'm, I'm taking my time and hoping that, you know, they disappear somewhere. So uh, yeah, we're almost to the end of this trail. And then we'll get to see again, our old and beautiful friend, the Pacific Crest Trail. Right now I'm on the People Hell Trail. I mean the uh, Indian Heaven Trail. The, the name hasn't been officially changed yet, but, uh, but I think we have a good shot. You'd walk a trail called People Hell Trail, right? Actually, if you're, you're smart, unlike me, you wouldn't walk this trail whatsoever because it's People Hell. Well, congratulations. We have officially made it to the Pacific Crest Trail number 2000. 
I have absolutely no idea what any of these numbers on any of these trails mean. I'm assuming it's just some sort of obscure classification system that some bored government bureaucrat just came up with one day because he had nothing better to do. But hey, I made it and that's what counts. Not only did I make it, I made it coming down the People Hell Trail. And yeah, I'm gonna just keep using that name. So hopefully that same bored bureaucrat will actually see this video and will get the hint that they need to start naming their trails to reflect the experience that hikers will actually have. It, it's been hell. It's been absolutely hell. There's, there's been people here. There's been people there. There's been people, oh, there's been people. That's the problem. But now I am on the Pacific Crest Trail. That That is the way to Mexico. And uh, over here, that's the way to uh, Canada. I don't have a cool way to pronounce Canada. It's just Canada and it's in that direction. Now, what I will tell you is this hike is meant to be a point to point hike, which means you go down the uh, People Hell Trail, AKA the Indian Heaven Trail. You come down here, you uh, look at the Pacific Crest Trail sign and you go, Ooh, ah, the Pacific Crest Trail. And then you just look at the sign for a couple more minutes and then you turn around and you go right back up the trail to the trailhead and to the campground where I parked my car. That is what all trails wants you to do. Now, what I noticed on the map is this particular trail, the Pacific Crest Trail, number 2000, not 2001, not 1999, number 2000. And I don't have enough fingers on my hand to do 2000, but you get the point. It heads up a ways, of course, and it connects to a trail called Cutlass Creek. Now, the campground that I'm parked at is called the Cutlass Creek Campground or something along those lines. The Cutlass Creek Trail goes directly back, literally, to, to my car, and it just makes a big loop. Now, there is no official loop on all trails, and the Cutlass Creek Trail itself has absolutely no reviews. It, it's on the app, it's on all trails, but there's like, no one's used it, there's no activity, so I, I have no idea. It's supposed to be a hard hike, but no one's used it, so how do they know it's hard? I don't know, it's all trails, they just make crap up. But, I really, really, really don't wanna go to the through the purgatory that is people everywhere. So, it is the end of the season, the Pacific Crest Trail is, is simmering down just a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is actually head up the Pacific Crest Trail. And it, it, looking at the map, you know, I'm an expert at just looking at stuff. So looking at the map, it looks like it's probably about the same distance, maybe even a little less. And I just put in coming down to look at the Pacific Crest Trail, number 2000 sign. So I'm going to head over down the Pacific Crest Trail and hit that Coltis Creek Trail, which is only about a mile and a half or something like that, and then head back to the trailhead. Now, that's assuming that the Cutlass Creek Trail is 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 hikeable, that it, there's not like giant boulders on it, that there's no like portals to hell or other dimensions or anything like that. Now, I got this off all trails, so the chances of that stuff being on there is actually probably pretty high. So, either I'm going to cut over or I'm going to find that the trail is unhikeable and I'm going to come back down here and go back through people have. Either way, there's going to be misery and complaining. So, I mean, the video is going to end up being the same no matter what I do. So let's go ahead. We're going to head down the PCT. We're going to try to head back to my car and we're going to try not only not to die in the process of doing all that, but we're going to try to avoid people as much as possible. But uh, we're not going to be going that way to do that. So uh, let's head down the PCT and uh, cross our fingers. Well, the effect has been almost immediate. I stepped onto the Pacific Crest Trail number 2000. The difference was almost immediate. I've been on here for like 20, 25 minutes. Haven't seen a single person. And I am once again, just by myself in the creepy woods. Now, I don't know in the long run if that's a good thing because usually being by yourself in the creepy woods is creepy, but compared to the number of people that I saw on that other trail, I'll, I'll, I'll take the creepy woods. Thank you very much. So I'm, I'm kind of working without a, a net here. 
I do not have this section uh, on an official All Trails like hike. I have it on, on a map. So All Trails has different versions of their map, and and the uh, the the drawn version, not the satellite version, shows this trail. So I know that it hits the uh, Coltus Creek Trail or whatever it's called. So I know I'm heading in the right direction. So I do have a map. I just don't have like official clearance of hey, this is a loop hike. Go this way. So I'm kind of making this a loop hike. I'm kind of you know pulling it out of my butt and playing it by ear or whatever cliche you want to say, but uh, I'm doing it because it's quiet out here. I haven't heard a single mundane conversation other than whatever the hell I'm doing right now under the GoPro. But uh, it's been very, very quiet. And I, I haven't seen that many people. And it is no longer hell. I don't know why I'm whispering, but yeah, it's, it's no longer hell. Now we're on the Pacific Crest Trail. So we're in heaven. Well, I mean, we've been on super busy parts of the Pacific Crest Trail before, but uh, it's certainly not here. So I'm just going to keep going, and I'm going to cross my fingers that all trails isn't slowly leading me into a death trap. This is typical for my videos. So I'm on the PCT, right? On that beautiful stretch of PCT going through the middle of the, of the creepy forest. Sure, it's creepy, but it's quiet. There's nobody there. I get up here. Now I'm on the uh, the Coltus Creek Trail. This is this is the Coltus Creek Trail, right? Right here, right, right there. That's 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 the Coltus Creek Trail. I get up to the sign on the side of the PCT that says Coltus Creek Trail. And I hadn't seen anyone in like 45 minutes, 50 minutes. And once I got away from the uh, Indian Heaven Trail, the, the people kind of melted away. And, and it was actually you know, tolerable again. And I had happiness and, and solitude and, you know, all, all the good things in life. Well, I decide, hey, I'm going to go ahead and make one of my Pulitzer Prize worthy. Not not winning. Oh, heaven, no. They're not going to get me any rewards for any of this crap. But definitely worthy because, as we've already said, my diatribes are brilliant. But I was going to make a rat video. You know, at the sign, talking about the sign, talking about the Coltus Creek Trail, where I'm going, you know, the whole, the whole, the whole thing. So I start to turn on my GoPro, and guess what happened? People. Some dude in his hiking pole showed up. He saw me there, and for whatever reason, uh, uh, suddenly a light bulb went off over his head, and he's saying, oh, I'm gonna sit down next to that guy. I'm, I'm panting heavily, so I'm just gonna sit here and stare at him. First of all, if you're panting heavily, I understand, I pant heavily all the time too. We're, we're, we're hiking out here, panting's okay. No, no hate for the panting, but please don't sit down in front of me, pant at me, and just stare. That's creepy even for me, and, and I have a pretty high tolerance for, you know, creepy weirdness. I look in the mirror all the time, creepy weirdness is like right there. But yeah, just decided for whatever reason. And again, we are out here in the woods. There is a lot, a lot of empty space. I mean, I had literally done about a mile and a half, two miles, however long it was, on the PCT, and, and there was plenty of space. There was nobody out there. It was quiet. You, you could you could go sit down and pant and stare at a tree. You'd go sit down and pant and stare at a mushroom. You'd go sit down and pant and stare at a lake. There's pl plenty of places to go sit down and pant. Why did you choose to sit down and pant at me? Do I look like I want to hear you pant? Do I look like I, I want to see you in any way? Do I look like I even want you to exist? But no. This is my luck. This is what I get. So this entire video, I mean this entire video, I always tell the story of the trail. Whatever the trail gives me is what I, I tell. And and today it, it's just, it, it's just, you know, complaint fest 2024. I mean, that that's what the forest is showing me. The forest is showing me that there's too many damn people and for whatever reason they want to sit there and stare at me and pant. I want to go back to the trailhead. I want to go back to my car. I want to go back to my house where I'll sit there and the dog will sit next to me and stare at me.
pants, but, but at least he's a dog, and at least he's a cute dog. And he's not, he's not a human. All right, I have like another mile left, and then I'm back to my car. So, according to all trails, wonderful, beautiful, and never wrong all trails. Try to say that with a straight face. Trust me, it is virtually impossible. I have a little under a mile left to the trailhead, and thus a little under a mile left to get to my car. So, I think it is a good time for us to do our trail ratings. Now, remember, we rate our trails on a scale of one to 10, with one being the worst possible scenario for an introvert, and that's Disneyland on the 4th of July. And that is a time in which Mickey Mouse has declared war on Goofy and has ordered his troops to invade Fantasyland and slaughter all of Goofy's troops. There are air raid sirens going off, there are bombs being dropped, there are bullets flying through the air, and they're charging like $50 for a churro and like $100 for one of those black and white Mickey Mouse ear cookies. It's hell. It is complete and total hell on earth. There's screaming, there's crying, there's, there's people, and as I said, there's fiery death because bombs are going off and planes are flying through the sky. That is introvert hell. Now, compare that to a 10 on our scale, which is introvert nirvana, and that is middle of a field in Antarctica, just you and your sentient, trained, and very bloodthirsty army of intelligent penguins. They view you as their leader, but if there's any people who come within even a mile of where you are, they will track them down, they will hunt them, and they will attack and eat them. And to me, that just means there's no people and just a bunch of you know, angry quacking, and that's complete heaven to me. I mean, the middle of a field with a bunch of angry quackers, way better than being out here with a bunch of people. That is introvert nirvana, and that's a 10 on our scale. So on that scale of one to 10, I'm going to give the entire hike today, that the Indian Heaven Trail, the PCT, and uh, the Cultus Creek Trail, I'm gonna give that about a three. Unfortunately, there were so many people, and, and not just so many people on the Indian Heaven Trail, there were, there were people, there were literally people coming out of the bushes. There were children, oh. I think I had, I, I think while I was on the PCT, I literally wiped out my memory of those children, but now that I'm almost back to the trailhead, it is slowly coming back to me, and so is the trauma of being around children. So, there were people crawling out of the sky. There were people crawling out of the trees. There were people popping up out of the ground. There were people here. There were people there. There were people everywhere. Even though there were parts like the PCT, for example, in which there was hardly anybody. And even this particular trail, I mean, this trail is kind of narrow, dangerous, and weird, and actually kind of hard to hike on, but at least there's no people. But overall, given all of those factors, I'm gonna give this hike about a three. And that is gonna lead us to my misery index. And of course, is a measure of, of my own misery. And it's rated on a scale of one to five, with one being a complete fantasy dream of no misery, which is impossible because I'm always miserable to one degree or another. And that uh, compares to a five, which is the worst possible misery I could ever experience. And if you've ever seen my videos before, if you're like the one or two people that have actually seen my videos before, you'll know that I often break that scale and, and like just shatter it and go to like five quadrillion. I literally get so miserable, I have to start making up numbers. On that scale, today in the people-y parts, I was definitely at a five or, or even higher, but we'll just leave it at a five. On parts like the PCT, and e even now, I mean, the only thing that's out here with me is a weird bird thing that's screaming in the woods, and, and that, that's fine. I can be peeped and, and, and balked out. I don't care about that. Because I don't care about that, I am currently at about, I don't know, a three, 2.5, three. I'm, an, I'm anticipating seeing a bunch of people at the trailhead, so I'm, let's leave me at a three and just keep it there. So there were points of this hike in which it wasn't utterly and terribly miserable, but there were quite a few points in which it was. So that's my rating for today. A three on the introversion trail rating scale and about a, let's just call it a four on the misery index. 
I could say more. I could make up more bad jokes. I could talk more about that weird bird thing, which is now quiet because I'm pretty sure it's hunting me. But uh, we, we don't need to. I, I think I've said it all. I think I've given a good trail rating, a, a good an idea of what you'd experience out here, at least on a, on a Sunday. <music> So, according to the national disaster that is all trails, I have very little left in this hike. I am just about back to the trailhead, and as we've already said, it means I'm just about back to my car. So, unfortunately, it is time for us to part, and time for me to say goodbye. Before that though, let's do a quick recap. Today, we were in the Indian Heaven Wilderness, hiking at least in the beginning, the Indian Heaven Trail. But of course, what we found out was that was literally a, a hell mouth that is pouring out people demons. So we switched over to our wonderful old friend, the Pacific Crest Trail, and eventually over to the Cultus Creek Trail to loop back again to the trailhead and to my car. But along the way, we saw some beautiful views. We saw volcanoes, we saw Mount Adams, we saw Mount Rainier, and then of course we saw a bunch of screaming children, but let, let, let's just try to forget that completely and just focus on the volcano part. But we also saw mushrooms, we saw beautiful forests, we saw a beautiful trail, and overall, we survived. But you know what I'm about to say. Stay introverted, everyone. And you know I'm gonna see you on the next adventure. <laughs>